Welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you how to render a video of this scene and I think this will probably be our first actual video that we've rendered. And We're going to render this as a series of frames so our animation could be six or seven hundred frames long so what we're going to be doing is rendering six or seven hundred JPEGs and then we're going to use Premiere Pro to put them together into a video. Now we do that for a couple of reasons. If we were rendering straight to video and we had to stop in the middle of it, we'd have to start all over again. But since we're rendering a series of frames, if we have to stop, such as when the class period ends, then we can pick up where we left off the next day. Each frame of this animation is going to take quite some time to render, and it will more than likely take longer than the class period. And that's going to be true with a lot of things we render. Plus, if we crashed, simply it crashed in the middle of rendering straight to video, we'd have to start all over again. In addition to that, we can take those frames and we can render out from Premiere Pro whatever video format we need to. We're not stuck with one format. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and take my playhead and scrub it back to frame one. And then I'm going to switch to the rendering menu set and I'm going to find Render and bring up the render settings. Now we've done this before. We're going to change our file type from EXR to JPEG. We're going to change our image size from 540 to HD 720. And then if you want to, you could increase the quality of your Arnold render, but I think with the time that's going to take to render anyway, I wouldn't do that. If you did do this, I would only do this, maybe each one of them by one, and I would just do camera, diffuse, and specular. But I'm not going to do that. Make sure you have Arnold Renderer selected here, and close. And then let's turn on Arnold in the viewport, and turn on the resolution gate by clicking this little button right here, and click play and frame your shot. Make sure that you are zoomed out enough to see the whole thing and that you have a good angle on it. Now that we've got our shot framed, we need to change one more thing in the render settings. So let's return to render settings. And this is perhaps the most important thing when you're rendering to a sequence. Under frame animation extension here, notice it says name extension single frame. We need to change that. If we don't change that, it will always render a single frame no matter what we do. So click that and select Name Number Extension. And now it will render multiple frames. We also need to tell it which frames we want to render. Right now it's starting at frame 1 and ending at frame 10. I'm going to end this at frame 700 and then close. And now, if we have to start this over, which we may, we can look in the folder where we're going to put these frames and see which ones we've already rendered and change the frame range. Or we can just check this box, skip existing frames. Next we want to bring up the render sequence menu item and we're going to select its options. Make sure you have the correct viewport selected. We don't need to check any of these boxes, but we do need to tell it where to put the frames. So click the folder, and it should default to the images folder inside your project folder that you created for this project. I always like to create a new folder in there and call it frames, and select that folder. Just click it and click select, and your file path should appear here. Once you have your file path specified, you need to do one extremely important thing before you push this button. You need to come over here to File and save your scene. Maya has a known bug that will not allow you sometimes to abort a render. The way you abort a render is you push Escape on your keyboard. But sometimes it doesn't work and you may have to force quit Maya and in that case you'll lose all your work if you haven't saved up to this point. 
so be sure to save before you push this button. Once you've got that done, you can then push this button. Once you press that button, the render view will appear and your frames will begin to render. And you'll see the progress of your render down here in the timeline. As each frame renders, it will progress like so. You'll also see the progress of each frame down here. So let's assemble these frames into a video using Premiere Pro. So here I have Premiere Pro open and you're going to create a new project and you're going to call it something. And we don't need to change anything in here. Just click OK. And that will bring up your Premiere Pro workspace. You need to make sure you're in the editing workspace. You can click that up here. We can change workspaces. We need to make sure we're in the editing workspace. And then we need to go to File, Import. And we need to find that folder where we put those frames. Here is mine. Here's my project folder. And inside there is the images folder and the frames folder where all the frames I rendered are. Now I didn't let this project finish rendering, so I'm going to navigate to a previous version of this project that I did let finish rendering. And here are all the frames that I rendered for that project. These are the frames from the video that I showed you at the beginning of this. Notice that Maya has numbered each one of these. To make this into a video, you need to select the first one and you need to check this box right here, Image Sequence, and then click Open. And that will bring in your image sequence as a video. Then you simply need to pick it up and drag it into the timeline and drop it. And you now have a video. I always like to do a fade in and fade out on my uh, animations. So to do that, select the clip in your timeline and come up here and find the effect controls tab. Open it up and you're going to start off your opacity at zero. So find the opacity, click that number, and change it to zero. And then click the little watch next to opacity, and that creates a keyframe. Move forward a few frames, and change the opacity to 100. And that fades in, like so. And then move to the end of your clip by dragging the playhead to the end and stop somewhere where you want to begin to fade out and create another keyframe by clicking this little button here move to the end of the shot find the last frame by using your arrow keys you want to be on the last frame use your left right arrow keys to advance one frame and then change the opacity to zero and you now have a fade in and a fade out. There's the fade in, and here's the fade out. Now to create a video out of this, what we need to do is export it. The first step to exporting it is to create an out point where the video ends. So right click on the timeline, and select Mark Out. You can also do this by pushing O on your keyboard and that creates an out point where the playhead is. Once we have that marked, make sure you have your sequence selected here that it's highlighted in blue, not this, not this, this, and then go up to File, Export, Media. And then in here we want to change a couple of things. First thing we want to change is the format. We want it to not be AVI, we want it to be H264, right here. And then we're going to uncheck export audio because we don't have any audio. And then we're going to make sure we have the video tab selected and we're going to scroll down in the video settings and find 
this setting, the bitrate settings. And we're going to change this number to something less than 10, maybe 5. And that will dramatically decrease our file size here. It also decreases the quality, but it won't be noticeable. Once we have that done, we need to specify a file path. So click on the output name. We can rename it here if we want. We can simply put it on our desktop. Click Save. And now we have our file path specified here. You can confirm that by hovering over the name of the file. And then you're going to click Export. Once you have that done, you'll have your video on your desktop or wherever you specified it to be. I would confirm that you have it. And I would play it so that you make sure it looks like you want it to look. And then you can upload that video to this assignment. Once you're done with this, you do not need to save your Premiere Pro file anymore unless you need to change something. And that concludes this water simulation project. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.